รายการนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสวัสดีครับ Hi, you're watching Hello English, your English program. I'm your host, b u k r i t r a i r a t These days, screen printing, shirts, and other clothing materials is very popular among the young generation. And you would probably use some type of big screening press machine, right? Well, today I will show you another unique way to screen print fabric or other types of materials, and it's using wood carvings. Wow, pretty interesting, isn't it? Let's go find out more in English magazine. The charm of these colors and designs that came from woodblock printing on cloth has a story that goes back to the time when the Ayutthaya Kingdom was flourishing. People at that time traded with many European nations, but other Asian countries like India were also quite important. You can see that Indian textiles were popular back then, but their popularity decreased around the time of the Second World War. Today, Indian textiles are being revived in Thailand because an Indian textile expert, Prapason p o s r i t o n g has invited people who appreciate textiles to join in breathing new life into the technique of woodblock printing. When the word got around about Prapason's idea, people who heard the news came to join workshops on woodblock printing at Prapason's house. Part of which is a studio equipped with all the tools necessary for textile work. Let's see what the steps are for doing woodblock printing on cloth. Since the art of woodblock printing is not very well known in Thailand, she's taken a technique of cloth printing that was popular in the past. And is using it to let people who are interested try it, learning the basics of printing with modern fabric dyes to make designs on cloth. The equipment you need is printing blocks made from teak wood and textile dyes. We use a technique called hand printing. We print on cotton, which is a comfortable fabric to wear. It is also related to the original printed fabrics imported from India. As for the steps in printing, first you need to prepare a work table that is covered sort of like an ironing board cover. It is soft and thick from many layers of sack cloth, and covered with a layer of cotton as a drop cloth. To mix the dyes, we use chemical dyes mixed with fabric medium. Which will cause a reaction that makes the dye molecules stick together. It's like a glue that helps the dye stick to the cloth. These dyes are long-lasting. Next, we stretch out the cloth we're going to print on. And secure it on the table. Then choose the designs you want to use. These are almost all Thai designs, like four-petal flower, interconnected flowers, bird's beak, celestials, and stem flower network. 
To make a continuous pattern on the cloth, you have to be able to fit the designs together so they cover the area of the cloth just right. Concentration is very important. The decisions you make about every detail during the moment you're working should be made carefully. When you press the wood block down in the tray of dye each time, you have to check if it got thoroughly covered in dye. You have to be sure the block is covered in dye and no parts of the design are missing dye. At the same time, you have to be careful not to get dye on your hands. Otherwise, you might accidentally smudge another part of the cloth. Your work must be clean. The textiles that people who come in for training can print on are handkerchiefs, scarves, t-shirts and bags. The method of designing the pattern is different for each one. We want people to get experience printing on different shapes of cloth. If some people don't clearly understand the printing process, or if they need to solve a problem at the time, like this may be a mistake, how can I solve it next time? The instructor is there to give advice. We want people who come to get training to apply what they have learned. Some may already own a business and they can apply this technique. Woodblock printing on cloth is an experiment to try things you've never done before. How can you make continuous patterns appear on a plain white cloth? Choosing colour tones that are appropriate and match the times requires thinking and planning. Imperfections in the handiwork are what give it its special charm. It's unique. A beautiful piece is created. That's valuable because it's one of a kind and it came from the hands of the person who came to get trained in woodblock printing. And they can use it in everyday life too. It's a work to be proud of, and you can take part in preserving this method of printing. ตอนนี้นะคะเนื่องจากว่าเออทางงานที่เราทําวิจัยนะคะจากต่อเนื่องนะคะสือว่าเป็นการต่อยอดมาจากงานวิจัยเกี่ยวกับผ้าอินเดียในรัฐสำนักสยามเนี่ยนะคะเราก็มีกิจกรรมที่ต่อเนื่องเพื่อให้คนไทยเข้าใจถึงเรื่องของกระบวนการการผลิตผ้าลายนะคะเราก็มีกิจกรรมการเรียนรู้นะคะทําเวิร์กช็อปนะคะสำหรับผู้ที่สนใจนะคะทั่วไปที่จะมาเรียนรู้เรื่องการผลิตผ้าลายด้วยการใช้แม่พิมพ์ที่แกะสลักจากแม่พิมพ์ไม้นะคะแล้วก็มาเรียนรู้ในเบื้องต้นนะคะถือว่าในขั้นตอนแรกเนี่ยเราใช้การพิมพ์ด้วยแม่พิมพ์ไม้ที่เป็นขั้นตอนที่ง่ายที่สุดนะคะเป็นสเต็ปแรกก็คือการพิมพ์ด้วยสีโดยตรงบนผืนผ้านะคะก็มีคนที่สนใจมากนะคะเนื่องจากว่าความรู้ชุดนี้เนี่ยยังไม่ได้มีการเผยแพร่อย่างกว้างขวางในเมืองไทยจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยนะคะคำว่าผ้าไทยเนี่ยนะคะก็มีความหลากหลายนะคะเนื่องจากว่ามีวัฒนธรรมของกลุ่มคนที่หลากหลายที่อาศัยอยู่ในเมืองไทยนะคะผ้าลายเนี่ยก็ถือว่าเป็นผ้าไทยชนิดหนึ่งนะคะที่มีความนิยมกันในเขตภาคกลางแล้วก็มีการแพร่กระจายไปในหลายๆภูมิภาคนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นคนเราคนไทยเราเนี่ยก็จะคุ้นเคยกับผ้าลายในฐานะว่าเป็นผ้าลายไทยนะคะเราก็มีการนุ่งนุ่งเป็นนุ่งจีบหน้านางนุ่งจงกระเบนอะไรต่างๆแล้วก็ในช่วงปัจจุบันเนี่ยนะคะที่มีกระแสะเรื่องการแต่งไทยนะคะผ้าลายก็ถือว่าเป็นตัวเลือกอันหนึ่งนะคะที่ที่เราเลือกใช้ในการแสดงการแต่งกายที่เป็นอัตลักษณ์แบบไทย Wow, look at all the different designs and patterns. They're all so beautiful. And if you would like to learn how to screen print using wood carvings, you could also take the course as well. 
Up next, our guest is only 16 years old. She loves to study the English language and she volunteers at her local hospital. Let's go to Tot now and meet Nong Bai Pat in English Club. สวัสดีครับ Hello everyone, welcome to English Club. I'm Thomas Tham Biem Sambun. Today I'm joined by a volunteer who works at the hospital and volunteers to help patients, help people, and she also wants to study in the medical field and also in healthcare. So let's meet today's special guest. Please welcome Nong Bai Pat. สวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะ Hello, so my name is Patana p i l a p o n g s uh, So I go by Bai Pat and I am 16 years old and, and I am currently studying in the English program of Sam Sin Retail High School. Right, so Nong Bai Pat, you're only 16 years old and most 16 years old would care about having fun, going out, but for you, you volunteer at the hospital and we'll talk about that soon. However, you want to study in healthcare and medical field. What made you fall in love with this field of work? Well, um, well, after so many voluntary works that I have um, particip participated, I have like, after, after so many experience, I just think to myself that, um, is this what I really like? And mm -hmm. the answer to that is yes, I really enjoy doing all of this. So I just figured to myself then, well, that's, that will be a future then, mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that. Mm. So talking about this, you, you felt that you love it due to your voluntary work, right? Uh, yes. When you volunteer at the hospital, what are your roles and what do you have to do? Well, since I am still young and I don't really have like any appropriate knowledge to really do the job, um, I basically became any errand girl in each department that they send me to. Mm. But it's still a very fun job. Mm. So what do you do as that person in each field? Uh, like for example, in the den 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 uh, in dentistry, the dentist right? Yeah, okay. and then uh, I just uh, send the patient's file to each doctor and then like in the medicine field I mm -hmm. just help them uh, collecting each package of the medicines and stuff like that. Wow, so it's a very responsible job. I mean you have to send the right documents to the right doctors and the right patients. But it's right still thing. like a very teeny tiny problem but I'm still glad to be of help to them. Mm, obviously, of course. And being in the hospital what kind of environment do you feel that it's like going in there and seeing the atmosphere, the environment? Well, since it is a hospital, obviously, like there are a lot of patients and they are in, that are in need of help. It can get depressing at some times, but at the end of the day, you look back at what you've done, and then, I mean, I, I was glad that yeah, I can be I can be really helpful in some situations. Mm. It's the little things that matter. Yeah. I mean, people think you have to do big things, but for you, you said it's a very little thing, but those little things are very important as well. Yes. Mm, absolutely. So what is the best experience you've learned by volunteering at the hospital? I mean, you say it can be depressing at times and your job is very little, but obviously there must be a very good experience that you've had. My favorite experience is that at the end of each day when you are about to exit the hospital, like, after, like I have to s sign my name like after each, jo each yeah. day, mm -hmm. and then ev and then when I sign my name and I looked up and everyone in the room will be like thanking me for helping with today, even mm. though they know and I know that yeah my 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 help might not be that much, but in the end I did help them and I think they are really grateful for that. Mm. So the doctors thank you or the patients thank you or both? Uh, usually just the doctors. The mm. patients don't really know who I am. Right. Mm. It's really important because the doctors need someone to help him or her sending the files, the documents. It's very important as well and prescribing medicine. So being in the hospital, what are some great things that you've learned f for yourself? On the first day of being of doing the voluntary work, um, I met this mm -hmm. grandpa who have been doing this voluntary work for like years. He has mm -hmm. been doing it for like a decade, I think. Yeah. And he taught me so many things, even though I spent like mm -hmm. just a day with him. But right. he taught, he changed my perspective on a few things. Like, even though you don't really have to help all these people, but since if I am able to and I can help, then and if I do it, then 
it will be it will all be worth it to see the smiles of the right. patients like being getting help and being help happy with that with their service. Mm. Okay, so the things you learn is to, you know, even though it's a little work, even though it's volunteer, you don't get paid for it, but just yeah. to do as much as you can and help them as much as you can. Yeah, it's very important. And the thing I haven't asked you yet is that most people don't volunteer they do something for money but you volunteer who was your inspiration that made you volunteer or who motivated you um at first i don't really have any inspiration i just thought that well i was curious about the work inside all this and but all, all in the, the hospital right? yeah in the hospital so well curiosity was the main reason but and my other friends who was going to the volunteer work as well they asked me if, if i really wanted to do it and i and i was just curious and so I said yes and I think in the end my reason started to shift from just curiosity to like the enjoyment from doing the work. Mm -hmm. And why did, were you curious about hospital? I mean there's so many things in the world you can be curious about. Why is it that you picked to be curious about healthcare and being in the hospital? Um, since I have been interested interested in science for so long um, mm -hmm. and, and medical is just one of the many fields of science mm -hmm. but I think the hospital is one of the easiest places you can find voluntary work oh, in. Oh right, right, it's absolutely. It's uh, convenience reasons too. Mm. And you said that it, it turned from curiosity into enjoyment, right? Yeah. What is the fun thing about your volunteer job at the hospital? You get to meet so many people like the social interactions with like the patients and some, some sometimes with the nurses or sometimes with the uh, workers mm -hmm. but it's just it's so nice being you get to communicate with a lot of people the people mm -hmm. you have never known like you get to know what their life has been through and you get to help with that mm -hmm. something like that I guess. Mm. Was there ever a time where you said, I don't want to be here anymore, it's too hot or it's too depressing? Because, like you said, at being at a hospital, sometimes it can be depressing seeing all the injured people, people who need help. Was there ever a time that you were only 16, as you are now, and you said, oh, I don't want to do this anymore? There, there was one, one time that I said to myself, like, why am I doing this? This is just labor work. It's too exhausting. But... When I look at everyone in the room who was just doing the exact, exact same thing as me, mm -hmm. I just wondered to myself, if they can do it, then why can't I? I don't have to, I mean, it's true that I don't have to do all of that voluntary mm -hmm. work, but if other people can do it and I, and I can actually do it, then why not do it? Mm. Don't stop yourself. Just I, I didn't want to stop myself just because I was tired or something. I mean, you can be helpful, so why not do it? Mm, absolutely, very amazing. And what are your future plans? I mean, you're only 16 now, you know what you want to do, but do you have any other future plans you want to share? Any future plan? Well, I just plan to study in like uh, a medical field, but mm -hmm. I don't really have any specific goal yet, but I just mm -hmm. know that I want to help people if, if I can. Mm. Mm, it's very important. Do you plan to be a doctor or a nurse one day, or is that out of not sure yet? Let's let's study first. More of the latter, but well, if I can be a doctor, then yes, I would like to be. Mm. Okay, and changing the subject now to English. Your English is absolutely excellent. Where did you learn your English from? Well, not the hospital, right? <laughs> Um, I have been. Oh, my mom is very good at English. So when I, when I, ever since I was young, she was she would be trying to teach me more English each day and wow. try to talk to me in English and stuff like that. I I guess it stuck to me somehow. So you learned it from your parents, not by going overseas or going to an international uh, school, right? No, nope, I have never been to an international school before. And been overseas, like study overseas before? No. Never. Never. So you learned it from your mom. Mostly, yeah. Mm. What can you give us a little tip? Like, how did she teach you when you were young? Did she just started talking to you in English, or what kind of techniques did she do? I would recommend um, the same way that Thai people have have become so good at Thai is to use it every day. Mm. To practice using it every day is um, a funda the fundamental of language anyway, and you have to practice like speaking it listening mm -hmm. and writing and just and 
And for me personally, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the media really help. Like I like re I like re listening to music and watching videos and stuff like that, right. and it helps with my speaking and listening. Mm. That's a great thing because everyone who comes on this program says that you have to use it all the time and you can use it in a fun way such as watching clips on the internet yeah. or listening to music, watching movies. Okay, so finally for motivation, can you give some people watching this TV program some motivation that it doesn't matter what you do, what kind of work you do, if it's a career or voluntary job, even a little job the little things can create a big difference. Can you please give them some motivation to just go for it? Okay, um, so from my experience, I would like to say that even though, if you think you're just doing something, something small, don't bother stressing over that. Small changes lead to big impacts and I would like to say that find what makes you happy and hold on to it. That will create the greatest impact on your life and on the others as well. Wow, absolutely amazing. The little things is the thing that creates a big changes yes, and also big absolutely. difference as well. Absolutely amazing. And they say the little things is the thing that counts the most. So thank you very much. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You've just seen a 16-year-old who does voluntary work and also helps with society. So if she can do it, you can probably do it as well. Just go for it. And it doesn't matter how big or small the changes are as long as you create an impact. We're out of time, so we'll see you next time. Swadi Kap. Wow, Nong Bai Pat is such a great role model for all 16-year-olds because she studies hard and she volunteers her time. And one day, I'm sure she will be a great doctor. And now it's time for English Corner. Let's see what Ajahn Pui and Ajahn Kip have for us today. สวัสดีค่ะคุณผู้ชมคะสวัสดีค่ะค่ะต้อนรับคุณผู้ชมเข้าสู่ English Corner ค่ะดิฉันปุ๋ยสิตาค่ะกิฟจิตตาสุพังค่ะพี่ปุ๋ยค่ะไปเดินเล่นกันไหมคะเดินเล่นค่ะ Go for a walk. Go for a walk. แดดปิ้งเปรี้ยวแบบนี้เหรอคะรออีกแป๊บหนึ่งก็ได้ค่ะแต่เดี๋ยวนะคะ Go for a walk. ค่ะไม่ได้แปลว่าไปเดินเหรอคะไม่ค่ะ Go for a walk เนี่ยแปลว่าไปเดินเล่นกันเถอะค่ะแต่ว่าจริงๆอ่ะเรามีอยู่ด้วยกัน3สำนวนเลยนะคะเวลาจะพูดว่าไปเดินเล่นเนี่ยค่ะอยากรู้ใช่ไหมคะใช่เลยค่ะสำนวนที่1ค่ะ Go for a walk ค่ะค่ะสำนวนที่2ค่ะ Take a walk. ค่ะและสมมติที่3นะคะ Go for a stroll. อ๋อมี3อันนะคะก็คือมี Go for a walk, Take a walk แล้วก็ Go for a stroll. ค่ะพี่ปุ๋ยมีตัวอย่างไหมคะอย่างเช่น Let's go for a walk along the river. ตัวอย่างที่1นะคะค่ะตัวที่2ค่ะ Let's take a walk along the river. และตัวอย่างที่3ค่ะ Let's go for a stroll along the river. โหอย่างนี้นี่เรามีหลายสำนวนเลยนะคะเนี่ยใช่ค่ะแต่ว่าการไปเดินเล่นนะคะก็ขึ้นอยู่กับบริบทด้วยนะคะอย่างเช่นถ้าเรานั่งอยู่นานๆแล้วอยากจะออกไปยืดเส้นยืดสายเราก็อาจจะใช้สำนวนว่า stretching one's legs ด้วยค่ะอ๋อค่ะแล้วถ้าหากว่ากิ๊บอยากจะบอกว่าเราอยากจะไปสูดอากาศอย่างนี้ล่ะคะถ้าสูดอากาศเนี่ยนะคะเราจะใช้คำว่า take the air ค่ะอ๋อ oh, take the air ดีจังเลยค่ะพี่ปุ๋ยขาแต่ตอนนี้ let's go for a walk in the woods กันดีกว่าค่ะ Let's go for a walk in the woods ค่ะไปเดินเล่นในป่าเนี่ยเหรอคะใช่ค่ะก็พี่ปุ๋ยเป็นคนรักธรรมชาติไงคะโอ้ยแดดเปรี้ยงขนาดนี้ถ้าไปเดินในห้างเย็นๆไปกินขนมอร่อยๆพี่ปุ๋ยไปค่ะไปค่ะใจง่ายด้วยนะคะคุณผู้ชมคะงั้นเดี๋ยวปุ๋ยขอตัวไป go for a walk ในห้างหาขนมกินกันก่อนนะคะวันนี้ปุ๋ยกับกิฟใน English Corner ขอตัวลาไปก่อนค่ะพบกันใหม่ครั้งหน้าสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Unfortunately, it's time to go. If you have any comments or suggestions you would like to give us, please send it to the address on the screen. And be sure to check out our show through these channels as well. I'm your host, Bukrit Rai Rat. See you next time on Hello English. สวัสดีครับ.